Welcome back to the GTN show. This week, we'll be taking a look at the inaugural Super League Arena Games, which definitely has a bit of a twist on the usual triathlon format. We have a man that has run 300 kilometers and cycled 600 kilometers in just five days. Yeah, I know. We also have possibly the strongest London Marathon elite start list in some time. So yeah, we have got a lot this week. And just to add to that, we're gonna be introducing our new GTN guest presenter. All right, I won't keep you hanging. Let's start the news by unveiling this new GTN guest presenter. Drum roll. It's me. Okay, don't be too disappointed. This might not be a huge surprise for many of you that have been following GTN, as you may have seen me popping up in videos such as the 100 kilometer run or the GTN Everesting run, which I can promise you I will not be doing again. But you may well see me in some videos going forwards as I step in as a guest. I've got a huge passion for triathlon as well as racing professionally for the last couple of years and I really look forward to sharing some of my knowledge with you and just generally having some fun. And so with that said, I will see you soon. Bye. I'm jumping in here now with some breaking news that landed just yesterday after just having filmed the GTN show. But this is big news. World Triathlon has just announced that their upcoming WTS Hamburg event will now be awarding the World Championship titles for 2020. So this follows the board's decision to cancel the remaining couple of events for the WTS series for 2020, as well as there obviously not having been a series to this point. So rather than athletes accumulating points throughout the season for within the WTS series for the World Championship title. It now comes down to this one event on the 5th of September in Hamburg. And already those start lists are packed. They're full for the elite male, female, and even the mixed team relay. We've got the current world champions, Katie Zafiris and Vincent Louis. We've even got the likes of Johnny Brownlee, multiple world champions, Maria Mola, Flora Duffy, and even Vicky Holland, amongst many others. They've also added an additional 10 places to the elite male and female start list. So all very, very exciting. And actually kind of takes us back to how the world titles used to be awarded prior to to the WTS series coming in in around 2009. So stay tuned for the 5th of September WTS Hamburg. Well, we're super excited to have Sam in more and as I'm sure you all agree, he brings a ton of energy and enthusiasm to the channel and to the team. So super excited about that. Let's just hope he doesn't think up any more crazy challenges or ideas for him, myself, and for any others in the team for that matter. But moving on, this weekend we had a first for the world of triathlon. We had an indoor triathlon, which isn't anything new, merged with virtual racing. That's right, we had the Super League Arena game. So an attempt to bring some high level elite racing while still adhering to social distancing guidelines, Super League really thought outside the box on this one. They invited 10 of the best male and female triathletes to the Rotterdam Swimming Centre in which they swam within the pool. But for the cycling and the running portions, they were done virtually on Zwift. So prior to the race, athletes were assigned a treadmill alongside the swimming pool, all connected up to Zwift. They also set their own road bikes up on a smart train, all connected up to Zwift also, obviously, all alongside the swimming pool. They then undertook Super League's triple mix format, which is three stages of swim, bike, run, but in a different order in each of those three stages. They started off with a 200 meter swim, four kilometer bike and a one kilometer run. They then just had a couple of minutes break before doing the same again, the same distances, but a different order. So they went bike, run, swim, a couple of minutes break and then finished with run, swim, bike. And we had some super exciting racing, both on the men's and women's side. In the women's race, well, it was a Jess Leomont show. She took the maximum 30 points, winning all three stages. Second place went to Rachel Klammer and third went to Valerie Bartlemé. In the men's race, well, we had some excitement from the get-go because in the first stage, it was Jonas Schomburg that actually decided to go shoeless on the run. And that saved them a whole chunk of time, causing a bit of an upset and taking the win quite comfortably. Going into the second stage, well, it seemed like a few people noticed that and so they'd also go shoeless. Though interestingly, Javier Gomez and Johnny Brownlee didn't and they lost some time actually in that second stage. In the end though, it was just a nice lag that took the win overall. Second went to Vasco Velasha and then third, amazingly, Javier Gomez managed to claw back for that. Now, anyone with their ear to the ground in the triathlon world will know 
that we actually had the French Grand Prix taking place obviously over in France the day before and Javier Gomez managed to do both and here's what he had to say he said well I didn't expect to be on the podium overall, so I'm super pleased. Uh, it's not my favorite distance uh, as an older guy like me. I raced a French Grand Prix event yesterday and the trip to trip there and here was horrendous with everything going wrong. I slept for four hours and felt it for most of the first triathlon but I'm proud to have been competitive amongst some of the best guys at these shorter distances. Well from one weekend of exciting racing to another but this coming weekend we have some proper real racing. This one is Challenge Davos over in Switzerland. It's a middle distance race with a slight twist. It's got a 54 kilometer bike section. Now we've spoken about this race before. It is attracting a stellar lineup. We've got the likes of Sebastian Keenley, Christian Blumenfeld, Imogen Simmons, Laura Phillip, amongst many others. Now, obviously given the lack of racing this year, the potential earnings for the pro athletes has been quite limited. So the PTO have stepped in for Challenge Davos and they have doubled the prize purse for it, which is absolutely fantastic. But not only that, they've also included a rather unique bonus pool fund for the athletes. This is going to the top 20 athletes overall for men and women. The way they're doing this is they've taken the fastest male and female times from previous years, I'm guessing, and just sort of calculating off uh, those that are involved in the race. And they've worked out a deficit of around 29 minutes and 39 seconds between the fastest male and the fastest female. So they'll be dedu deducting that time from the women's finishing times and then we'll see who finishes in the top 20 and cashes in on that bonus pool fund, which is pretty exciting, a very, very cool format and a nice way to bring equality into the sport. Well, moving on, and I think it's fair to say the athletics world seems to have kicked their racing off with a bang. Last week, we spoke about that astonishing 5K time in which he broke the 16-year-old 5K world record. This weekend, we had another Diamond League event over in Stockholm with some super fast racing. But I think it's fair to say here at GTN and us as triathletes, we're often quite attracted to those longer endurance events. So those major marathons often take our fancy and get us quite interested. And well, you may be interested to hear the London Marathon start list because it is pretty spicy. If not, their best start list to date. They have none other than the sub two hour man, Kipchoge. He is actually unbeaten on the London Marathon course. He's gonna be racing alongside Kenanisa Bikili as well as Sir Mo Farah, who's actually down as a pacemaker, which will be quite interesting to see who he's pacing perhaps for Olympic Games times, trials times and whatnot. On the women's side, we also have an equally stacked field as well as the world record holder, Bridget Koshkai. Now, obviously there is no mass participation event for the London Marathon this year. They've postponed it to October the 4th. It's an elite only event. It's gonna be on a closed loop circuit of St. James's Park, but still ends with that iconic finish down the mall. And finally from me on the news, before I'm actually quite excited to hand on over to Fraser. This weekend, American ultra runner adventurer John Kelly completed something quite astonishing. It's called The Grand Round. It involved 300 kilometers of running and 600 kilometers of cycling. Now, I'm actually gonna try and do my best to explain this to do it justice because it really is quite incredible. Now here in the UK we have a number of routes or rounds we often call them that are just insane. They are over tough tough terrain and tend to take in insane amounts of elevation and John decided he would combine three of the toughest of those. So he did the 98 kilometer Paddy Buckley round, which is a route in Wales that features 8,500 meters of elevation gain. He did the 106 kilometer Bob Graham round, which I'm sure many people have heard of there in the Lake District, a route which is around 8,200 meters of climbing. And finally finished with the 96 kilometer Ramsey round in Scotland, another 8,500 meters of elevation gain. Oh, and he cycled between each of those. So that in total works out at 300 kilometers of running, 25,000 meters of climbing, and more than 600 kilometers of cycling, all of which he completed in just five days. And just to add to this amazing feat, he did this 
just around three weeks after having set the record, the fastest known time, the FKT, over the Pennine Way in the UK, which is 431 kilometers of running. That took him two days, 16 hours and 14 minutes, 46 minutes. Unfortunately, that FKT was actually beaten by his friend Damien Hall just a week later, but I don't think anyone's gonna be taking this incredible feat away from because it is absolutely amazing and I really do take my hat off to this athlete. What a staggering performance over the space of a month. Uh, but now, very excited to hand on over to Fraser. Well, hello everybody. Now, I'm very glad to be back involved in the show this week, and especially after that news that we're now going to have Sam more regularly involved as a guest presenter. So I'm certainly looking forward to having him around more in the future. But now I'm going to get going with this week's race news. And much like last week, there was just one event to talk about, and that was this week's Ironman VR Pro Challenge. And this was the 20th edition of that. So yes, they have been going for an incredible five months now. And this week it was over the Ironman 70.3 distance, which meant that the athletes had a 500 meter swim to tackle, followed by 90 Ks over parts of the Ironman Austria course, finished off with a five kilometer run. Now this week, it was also an all North American affair with athletes from America and Canada taking part. In the women's racing, we had an American victor in the form of Elisa Dela. Now she sealed that with an incredible 16.47 5k time, so pretty rapid. Second place went to Canada's Pamela Ann St-Pierre and third place went to Jennifer Spielner from America. Now in the men's racing, we also had a clean sweep because it was American Nicholas Chase who took the win. Second place went to fellow American Trip Hipple and third place, despite a 15 minute and six seconds 5K, went to Canada's multiple Ironman champion, Brent McMahon. Right then, so now it is time to have a look at some of the pictures that you are sending us in each week. Now, first up, I've got this one from Tim, who says he is somewhere in Southern Maine over there in the US. Now, he's aboard his Felt IA14, and he says, I used the automatic route feature in Garmin Connect and ended up on this road. Now, my TT bike, he says, is certainly not a gravel bike, but I still had a fun adventure all the same. Now, I'm glad to hear it, Tim. And you know what? I think it's good to get off the beaten track every now and then, even if I'm on my TT bike. So hope you had a good day and didn't come home with any punctures. Now, next, I've got a cracking picture here from Benjamin. Now, he is in a very nice part of the world. I'm rather envious of you, Benjamin. La Jolla Shore in San Diego. Now, what a great place to go for an open water swim. But hey, he is on point here. He is branded up with his GTN swim cap, bright blue one for nice and safe out in the water. And I also can't help but notice he's got what I think is a very vintage Xterra wetsuit on. Or please let me know if it's not vintage, Benjamin. We don't see very many Xterra wetsuits over here in the UK and Europe. So let me know when you got that suit. But thanks very much for that and keep enjoying those swims over there in California. Now, back to the bike picture, and this is a cracker from Damien, who's in London, and he is aboard Specialized X Works Shiv. Now, he says, just got this bad boy four weeks ago, and I've been loving it from the start. I always thought the tri bikes were just uncomfortable machines until I got this one. No single niggle or discomfort, and did I mention it's hella fast? Well, glad to hear you're loving that bike, and I'm sure you'll get to grips with it more and more in the near future. So, thanks for sending us that in there. Now finally, we've got this great story from David. Now it is David O'Dwyer and he is in Ireland. Now David says, I started training for triathlons in 2018 and my first race with the Ironman 70.3 Dunleary later in the year. Since then, I've done Ironman Yogo last year and a number of 70.3s and sprints. But on Friday, September the 11th, he is gonna embark on a 2018 kilometer ride that takes in nearly 18,000 meters of elevation, all solo and unassisted. So that is one heck of a bike ride that you're tackling, David. And this is all in aid of Peter House, which is an Irish mental health charity, and he's gonna be raising as much money as possible for them. He's planning to cover the distance in just 10 days, and he says, since I've only been riding my bike for just over two years, this is a huge challenge, but I one that I will not fail. So absolutely all the best of luck for that one, David. And if you want to read more about it, or perhaps send him some money, he has got a Just Giving page, just search his name, or alternatively, find him on Instagram at underscore D.O. Dwyer. Now, we love to see all of your pictures, so please keep sending them in and letting us know what you're getting up to out there in training or whatever you're doing, because it is great to keep involved. Now, you can do that by finding the link down there in the description, or there should also be a link up on the screen now. 
Right, now it's time to have a look at your caption competition entries. Now, Heather had an interesting picture of two synchro swimmers for you last week, and I have narrowed it down to five runners up and a winner. So I'll get started with those now. And David Bannister, he came up with flagrant breach of the COVID social distancing rules, but breathing to the safest side at least. Seth Johnson came up with high five, stroke, high five. Like it, Seth. Garrett Schost came up with, I'm glad we are synced up and not sinking down. Now that was a clever one. Lee Naylor was simply with, hi mum, hi dad. And then we had Alex Franklin who suggested tandem swimming coming soon, twice as efficient. But the winner this week comes from Bailey Ward and he said, what did the ocean say to the other ocean? Nothing, they just waved. <laughs> Now I think that's great, so congratulations Bailey, please remember to send in your details so we can get a cap out to you. But if you fancy winning a cap next week, well, get your thinking caps in and send us a thought about this picture here. Now, it comes from the recent Super League Indoor Arena Games, and this is a very focused looking athlete if you don't mind me saying. She has got the eye of the tiger going on there, but anyway, you let us know what you think. Drop your suggestions down in the comments below and we'll see if you can win a cap next week. Now we're coming towards the end of this week's show but with some great content coming up later in the week and first up I want to tell you about another Zwift race where we've got GTN battling GCN. Now I know who my money would be on but you'll have to tune in later in the week to see who took the spoils. We've also got a video about how to adapt your swim stroke for the open water. And perhaps you have noticed these t-shirts that we are now wearing, these brand new summery vibe themed t-shirts. If you fancy picking up one of those, follow the link on screen and you can get one of them in our freshly stocked shop. But hopefully you have also enjoyed this video, so hit that like button and don't forget to click on the globe to subscribe and not miss any of the other videos on our channel. And before you go, I've got a couple other videos to remind you of. There is a fantastic challenge video that Heather took on with Mark, that is the swimmer versus runner and that is here. But they also did a video about pacing versus non-paced and you can find that here.